If you like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. For just $1 a month, your name can appear at the beginning of this and many other upcoming videos. Holy shit. The prophecy has been fulfilled. I honestly feel really melancholy talking about this episode in some way. Not because it was a bad episode, but because I'm starting to realize that this is the final normal episode of the show. It's the last Saturday morning airing, and then the show is going to end this upcoming Saturday. It's actually really surreal that it's going to happen soon, and with everything that's happened, it makes me feel a little bit... empty. But that's not the subject of the video, so let's take a look at the Big Mac question, where Big Mac and Sugar Bell try to come up with a way to propose to each other in secret while the others try to help out, with not-so-positive results. It's an episode that follows a pretty standard flow in terms of romantic comedies, but what helps to make it work is all the qualities in between. The first is that it has a really good sense of humor. There's a lot of jokes in this episode that really work, from the delivery to the timing to the way they're tied into the story. They don't hold on anything for too long, and the quick speed in which the jokes are delivered in make the punchline so much stronger. Things like Sweetie Belle at the spa, the quibble between the boys, the pop culture references, the exchanges between the characters, visual gags, and especially Discord just being his old chaotic self in a way that isn't demeaning to his character. This is some pretty wholesome humor that fits pretty well into a story like this, and it's made even better by just how well the cast is presented. The best example being Discord, who's really carrying his previous development from other episodes into this one. He's not being selfish in his methods of helping Big Mac out, he genuinely wants to make the proposal work out for them. When he finds out about the big news, he's really enthusiastic and supportive of him. He takes the lesson he learned in the breakup breakdown to heart and stops acting cynical towards the concept of love. It's just that his methods of helping out aren't exactly something the others are used to. Plus, him encouraging straightforwardness by just showing the message to Sugar Bell is a really unique step for him. He's always suggesting the most out-of-left-field perspective to a situation, but this is an exception where he prefers something to be handled normally. And rightfully so, since this is such an important thing for a close friend of his. I really love how Discord's smart aleck attitude is approached in a playful manner while still remaining in tune with his character development. He doesn't act like a jerkass, he's just being a trickster, poking fun at his friends while keeping it good-natured. Spike is pretty adorable in the way he acts as a hopeless romantic, which would make sense for him with his experiences with Rarity. He analyzes Big Mac in a way that shows how how he's grown pretty familiar with him and has a right mind in supporting the proposal. His banter with Mrs. Cake is something new, and the way he accidentally burns the desserts from focusing on a single goal was pretty funny. The CMC also have a nice role in the story as they want to seek a shot at redemption by making up for the mess they made back in Season 6. They have a much better dynamic this time around, with Apple Bloom expressing her excitement while the other two try to keep her in check. It's a step up from last week because instead of being cocky and snarky, they put forth an effort to improve on past mistakes, actually being more mature and tackling a problem rationally. Another thing that makes the episode work is how exactly it's structured. It's a frame narrative in which the story changes between different perspectives to see various characters' experiences with the events. For a plot like this, it works in the episode's favor since we can see the story from other points of view, which gives the audience more mileage for its runtime. While the show has had several wedding episodes in the past, what helps this one to stand out is that it focuses specifically on the proposal. It's about how the effort was made, and it's a fun way to show how different couples have different ways of popping the question. Sometimes you want something simple, but sometimes you want something over the top. But it's a sentiment to showing how they have their own way of expressing their love, which is still pretty sweet. And it's interesting how they send the message in a way that plays to each other's language and what they like most. Like combining your interests into a love letter. But I think what I like most about the episode is that it shows just how much Big Mac has grown over the course of the series. It's always nice to see him in a role where he actually speaks his mind and he gets a real chance to express himself. And of course he would express himself here since he values his relationship with Sugar very much. He's really sentimental and soft-spoken. And no matter how hard things got, he still kept trying to make things right for her. He shows a strong sense of commitment, and he's also shown to be a good listener. He wanted to carry out the tradition his parents started in a faithful way, which shows how much value he was putting into the proposal. In the beginning, he was always quiet and very reserved, only ever briefly expressing himself through short answers. Then in Brotherhood Social, he admits to wanting to have a close relationship with Apple Bloom, offering his thoughts on a subject that has a deep meaning to him, and eventually he would work up the courage to start a long-term relationship. 
Big Mac never got much spotlight in the series, so it was nice to know that his last episode had a special touch to it, and Sugar's message to him has a nice meaning to it. After all the crazy things that happened that day, she simply wanted to reassure him how even though things won't be perfect, it'll still be fine as long as they support each other. They don't have to do anything by themselves because the point of any relationship is working as a team. Sugar Bell really isn't just an object that exists to be Big Mac's love interest. This episode shows how she has an agency in the relationship, taking it upon herself to propose to Big Mac. And with her ending speech, she clearly takes the relationship seriously. She takes the initiative to express her feelings to him, putting her own weight into the partnership instead of leaving him to do everything on his own. Considering he had to have shared his family history with her at some point, it's a really good detail for how much Sugar means to him since he's usually so tight-lipped. Their relationship doesn't have to be like Bright Mac and Pear Butters, it could be something different, which would truly make their love special. This is what Sugar wants Mac to know, and it's a great way to return his feelings for her. It acts as a good moral for learning how to make the most out of your situation, and it's even a nice lesson for couples to learn. It's actually a really good piece of advice to give to people in any kind of relationship. And I really had to applaud some of the little details they added to make the story feel more complete. The blueprints for the shelf that got them together in the first place, Sugar's personalized message acting as a nice callback to the hearts and hooves mishap, Burnt Oak showing up to the wedding, the wedding taking place at the intertwining tree, showing how Bright and Pear actually helped contribute to the ceremony ahead of time, the lantern symbolizing how they may be there in spirit, even Grand Pear making an appearance at the wedding has a strong meaning to it when you put it in perspective. Last time he was here, he left his daughter and never saw her again. But this time he got to redeem himself by showing up to his grandson's wedding. He gives Big Mac his unconditional blessing and closes the gap that caused a massive and bitter divide between the two families. For an episode with such a silly and comedic idea, I'm actually surprised they pulled it off as well as they did. The Big Mac question was such a great note to end Slice of Life episodes on. It was funny, adorable, touching, emotional, and sentimental in all the right ways. And with this being the final Slice of Life episode, it makes the emotions all the more effective. It's very moving, and it wonderfully concludes Big Mac's story arc, as well as a few other arcs in the show. It's easily amongst the best of Season 9, and a great way to settle the mood before the end. Which I still can't believe is about to happen. See you then.